1905 was a very good year for Charles Ernest Tatham deigned to appear. Proud parents who lived on Guelph's Woolwich Street were thrilled and excited their first son to greet. As infant and toddler and schoolboy and youth, in that old upper meeting room, he learned of God's truth. Just 17 months after Ernest came Sid, but Grandma chose Ernest as her favorite kid. She spoiled him, so brother and cousins were jealous, but he was her golden boy, or so they tell us. While trying to escape one day from their yard, he mounted the gate, which was bolted and barred, and Sid squeezed beneath, then both boys got stuck. When mother found out, they ran out of luck. From Grandma, he learned how the Lord healed her throat, and after that touch, she sang every clear note. When he was 13, his good father died, and the future was his alone to decide. Marion McAllister, a classmate at school, invited young Ernie to her Sunday school. So at Aramasa Road, he, Alec, and Sam were converted to Christ, and it was no sham. These teenagers changed into budding young preachers, admonished and trained by their elders and teachers. At 19, the summer of 1924, he was off to Kingston to manage a store, a grocery, for ten bucks a week and his board, he opened a Sunday school in Street Urchins Poured. One day he received a letter from Sam requesting he preach in the old gospel van. The little assembly found his leaving depressing, but with fifteen dollars gave him their blessing. His very first gift, in Christ's service he hired, he'd never forget, nor the faith it inspired. So he traveled by train in the second class coach, two days and a night, and just about froze, to the Gas Bay coast, far out to the east, where his preacher boy's talent by practice increased. They toured through New Brunswick, Quebec, then came back to Toronto, where one year he worked at Kodak. Kodak. His desire for God's will and biblical knowledge led him to enroll at Toronto Bible College. Three years of studies, leading choir and quartet, evangelistic meetings, then Beulah he met. God said, this is the wife I've selected for you. Love and serve me together in all that you do. They studied and prayed with true dedication, and the senior head boy was C. Ernest Tatham. Graduation and marriage for the groom and his bride, and the village of Lakefield was where they'd reside. In theater, cheese factory, farmhouse, he preached, and many fine people for Jesus he reached. Then H.A. Ironside of Great Moody Church considered Ernest Tatham the end of his search. But Ernie was shy and to the brethren was loyal. He rejected the U.S. for Canadian soil. Lonely trips west to sell books and preach, no stone left unturned, lost souls to reach. Three baby daughters were born in succession. Much later, two sons joined the procession. In 1938, Beulah's life nearly taken by pneumonia and phlebitis, Ernie's whole world was shaken. But God answered prayer and the doctor advised a trip to the south during next winter wise. So meetings were planned for Tampa, Key West, Nassau, Spanish Wells, God graciously blessed, 
the people were wondrously generous and kind, and then on the Bahamas and their lives were entwined. Kawartha Christian Camp for kids, adults, and teens. Boat rides and bonfires and swimming, all means. The ice house with sawdust, the outhouse with smells, the preacher shovels dung with high boots and pails. Sports, crafts, and quiet times with campers on their knees, the best of Bible teachers in the chapel neath the trees. Then Peterborough's CHEX radio hit the air, the morning cheer hour each day Christ to share. Hartzorns and Nielsen's and soloists were heard, with Beulah on the piano and Cheerio the bird. Then the radio Sunday school with lessons for free and musically at manage with Ruth, Lois, and Gracie. He instigated the opening of golf conference grounds where brethren to this day no fellowship abounds. Lakefield Sterling and Braidwood he founded at Emmaus, his expository teaching resounded. Courses and books he taught and he wrote, he now was acclaimed as a speaker of note. Young Canada Bible Hour, the Bible in the News. Leeside Bible Chapel, no time to lose. From conference to seminar, retreat to summer camp, among Plymouth Brethren, CET was reigning champ. And God seemed to open another new door. Bible Town beckoned on Florida shore. He and Viola led a Bible land tour. Invitations to speak were not slacking for sure. Bible Chapel was the next innovation. During his 14 years, he led many to salvation. His Beulah got sick with terminal cancer, and a miracle healing was not the Lord's answer. His grief at her loss was deep and sincere. Throughout Christian circles, there began a renewal. The Lord sent His Spirit with new power and fuel. Filled with His Spirit, overflowing with praise, instruments clapping and holy hands raised. From conservative order, a hazardous journey. Through heart search and study, it happened to Ernie. Theological brethren fretted and frowned. He let the tide come in and just about drowned. So meetings were planned for Tampa, Key West, Nassau, Spanish Wells, God graciously blessed. The people were wondrously generous and kind. From then on, the Bahamas and their lives were entwined. Dear Louise dried his tears in less than a year. This beautiful lady with grace, charm, and poise managed a household, a husband, and boys. In Nassau, well known as a place for vacation, Ruth and Grace served in Christian education. They opened Kingsway and Jack and Jill. And filled them with kids from over the hill.
For 83 years, you've been a powerful force of wisdom and knowledge, a major resource. And so we salute you, a man among men. Happy birthday. May you live to be 110. grandkids and all. Kathy, Ronnie, Nancy, Wendy, Scott, Terry, Kim, Kelly, Chris, Kevin, Jenny, Janet, and Corey. He walks every morning. He's fit as a fiddle, retains his deep voice, has no spread around the middle. King's Academy is the second home for Paul and Sue, and Corey and Jana and Jennifer Liu. Sue teaches English, and Paul is the dean. Obsessed with his lists, some say are He was 70 then, and the past 13 years have brought him much joy and also some tears. Scriptures which flow through his veins like his blood come forth from his lips like a powerful flood. O oh God, thou hast taught me thy word from my youth. Hitherto I've told forth thy wonderful truth. So now when I'm old and gray-haired, Forsake me not until I have shared. And shown thy strength to this generation. Happy birthday, Daddy. I love you. God bless you. Hi, Daddy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Grandpa. Happy birthday, Grandpa. Happy birthday, Grandpa. Happy birthday, Grandpa! Yes. How are you doing, Grandfather? <laughs> Happy birthday. That's a cone head over there. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Grandpa! 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 Happy birthday, Gr